So water's fishing is a little bit different this week. Hang around to the end because we do do a fair bit of fishing. But today's the whole history of the old weeper and you're going to be in for a surprise. The heap of history, the weeper. Weeper was actually the second of three Mavarian missions that were started on the western side of Cape York. In 1891 they started Marpoon, in 1898 they started Weeper, and in 1904 they started Arakoon. Now Marpoon and Arakoon have become very, it's, they're very little communities now, so a lot of the history has been taken away, but in 1932 they moved Weeper, they moved it to a different location, and they abandoned the old mission, so it makes it the perfect place to go and explore. And being history buff, Sam and I just couldn't wait to check out the old Weeper Mission, could we? Now the Weeper Mission was pushed so far up the Emberley River to avoid getting making contact with the um, pearling ships and the sea cucumber ships. And, and these guys were taking indigenous workers and some of those indigenous workers were never seen again and they were treated really poorly. So the government at the time was really supportive of the missions as a way to regulate this industry that was uh, using indigenous labour. So because of that, they pushed it up the Emberley River as far as they could. And it's a place called Spring Creek, and Spring Creek isn't on the map. Our Navtronics has run out. We're not even on Navtronics anymore. We marked it out with a, uh, um, a, a pair of scissors to work as a um, protractor of some sort to work out how far up we were. Wrong. So we've got no idea what we're doing. <laughs> we think we're archaeologists, but we're certainly not. But we're going to have a bit of a fish, but we really want to find some sort of remains of the old mission. It started in 1898 and closed down and moved to Jessica Point, where Napronim is today, in 1932. So it ran for quite a few years, but it's it's been shut down for 90 years. So who knows what's left. The cyclone took a lot of it out which is part of the reason why they moved and malaria was a big problem up there. So I don't know what we're going to find if anything. We're on a mission and we've got to get back before the storms hit. It's already starting to build up. It's only about nine o'clock in the morning, so it's going to be a long day. <laughs> I'm so, not nervous at all. You know, we've got no lunch and we don't catch any fish. Seriously? Yeah. We've gone up the Emberley River as far as we possibly can before we just hit rock bars and uh, it's we, we can't get up any further. So we know that it's back this way. We've just checked out a creek here. It, we don't think this is Spring Creek because it's on, a, it's on a straight bit of river, but Spring Creek seems to come off a bend. Um, like I said, we've got no maps or anything with us at the moment. What are you going to do? No, well, I'm just thinking that maybe you've got to pick up the cow dung and have a whiff of it, and then that can tell you where that cow's from, if I knew where the cows were from. Are you serious? <laughs> what did we do six weeks ago when we were up here? Uh, traipsed up and down the Embley, trying to find the lost city of uh, Old Weeper. Uh, after, which we most probably should have done the research that Mark's done since that time before we did our first trip. Well, In I hindsight. Kind of, kind of thought I knew where I was going. Yeah, but you didn't. I've got a photographic memory, so I thought I'd uh, wouldn't need to bring all the maps because it's locked in. Yeah, no, 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 mm. I don't think so. I think we actually do need to bring some maps because we may have found something today. Which we've got some well, maps. I downloaded 200 maps on my iPad. Yeah, where's the iPad? Well, it's at home in charge. <laughs> Just in case we need it. Uh huh. Mm. My point exactly. Judging. <laughs> <A bit> judging. <laughs> 
So if we had done a bit more research, we wouldn't be back here again six weeks later. <laughs> but but yeah. we know where it is now. We do. But we're here where we're able to tie off and it's about a one or two kilometres, probably two kilometre hike in to where the old mission is. And we haven't seen it yet. We don't know what to expect. We don't know how, how much is left over from the old mission, but we're going to take you in and, and have a look. So this is so exciting because the first time we've found something up this far that's actually man-made. You can see whether it was actually a uh, fence or what it was, but it survived a couple of bushfires too by the look of it. it this was a structure too of some sort, wasn't it? Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that would have been a house. Some type of structure for sure. Would have, been, would have been stumped for a house, hey? So it's really not too far from the river. No, I think we I don't even think we've traveled a kilometer yet. Look, there's more over there too. Oh yeah, that must have been this must have been part of the settlement. Must have been houses, eh? Because they would have had to elevate them a little bit, especially in the wet season. So after finding the post of some of the old houses, we kept walking a little bit further and we did find uh, stockyards that were actually in use right up to the 60s. But more importantly, we found an outstation, but it was quite sad to see it in the condition mm. it's in. So just check this out. Just slushing through water, aren't we? <laughs> we just put the drone up and about 400, well, exactly 410 meters from where we put the drone up, we found another track it leads to the actual creek itself, so we've got a slush through wetland. We've walked, walked a couple of kilometres already, but we've got a, a little bit further. It's so far away from where we found the original buildings though, isn't it? So mm. we don't know uh, whether, whether we're going to find anything else or whether we've tracked too far. So anyway, we're here now. Good everyone. Yeah. So he goes over just with himself. I'm going over with my thongs in my hand, <laughs> a big yellow media case, and a, camera. and a camera. What could possibly go wrong? Don't drop the camera. <laughs> Don't drop the camera. <laughs> That's all right, I'll, I'll watch out for the crocs myself. So this is the little shack that we saw across the other side of the creek. So in 1998, this would have been 100 years that this mission was around. And I'm not sure when this was built, but it was built as part of a, uh, in, in memory of the old mission that used to be here. This building was two separate buildings for the two different clans that used to live in this area. It's sad to see, if you have a look inside, there's, it was a really well decked out little house, but, uh, what it would have been would have been an outpost for families to come in the dry season, come and stay in memory of the old mission. There used to be a plaque here too. They laid a plaque for the hundred years as well, but we can't find that and that's not your long journey. See your names up on the old team. Big love heart and 20 mile written next to it. When they moved from here, they moved the new mission 20 miles upstream and this became known as 20 mile mission. So love 20 mile. TO stands for traditional owners. The traditional owners of 20 mile. It's got all their names up there. Just as we were walking into where the shed is, we came across what looks like stockyards to us. Um, there is a lot of metal and a lot of wire. Once again, not really quite sure um, whether that was around at that time. Um, but definitely these these wooden structures, you know, could quite possibly indicate that this that maybe that they did keep cattle um, around this area and as we were talking about when we were walking over here was that given the remoteness of where we are they would have to be very self-sufficient because there's just nothing here. Stop it! <laughs> Mark, stop it! <laughs> 
I was just making sure you weren't going to get eaten. <laughs> no one any. I don't want to get in by crocs. No, I know. It'd be horrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. How sad you'd be. Let's have the footage. Yeah. <laughs> Think we should have done this in the dry season? Correct. Yeah. Well, Very unpleasant. You left your runners in the boat. Well, I wanted to feel the earth. <laughs> that keeps you grounded, apparently. Okay. Yeah. I wonder why they call it the wet season. All we did was got hopelessly lost the first time. I thought I knew where I was going. You had no idea where we were no, going. Didn't, didn't you I. basically just wanted an excuse to go up the Embley and mark spots on your GPS for fishing spots and rock bars. I did mark a couple of crack and rock bars, didn't I? Uh, not just a couple. <laughs> okay, so we got hopelessly lost. We went back the second time and what we thought we found was just the hamlet. And in the letters we discovered that the old missionaries wrote back to Germany they talked about the Hemlet being this little village outside the main village and we just had to go back there and explore again and by luck I bumped into the coordinator of the Weeper Library who knew so much about the area and actually passed on a paper to us didn't he by it was Michael Morrison was that the guy that wrote the paper? Morrison? Well, I think it was Morrison. Morrison yeah Michael Morrison yeah Okay. Yeah. We'll go with Michael Morrison. I'm pretty sure it's Michael Morrison. Sorry, Michael, if I got that wrong. But he actually had, he done an archaeological study of the whole area. Archaeological study. That's what I said. Of the whole area. And he had maps and everything. So we we only scratched the surface the first time we found it, didn't we? So we just had to go back in one more time. One more time. One more time. Yeah. <laughs> Just walked through a green ant's <laughs> nest. Lots of love me. Sam thinks it's hilarious. The biggest back attack ever. <laughs> I'm walking along here by myself as uh, Mark's the, got his phone to operate the drone. This is a normal occurrence. But as I'm walking along here, quite, uh, it's very. There is definitely a sense of some type of spiritual thing going on here and it really does make you have a better appreciation as to what our First Peoples really do, I guess, honour and treasure and find so valuable about this country because it's, uh, it's kind of eerie but at the same time it really does have this, this beautiful, wonderful presence about it. Um, it'd be lovely to be able to put that sense and feeling into a camera but you just can't. But uh, if you ever get the opportunity to uh, to get out and about in these types of places in Australia you'd be crazy not to. I'll give you a quick look around.
again. Whereas those big structures there would definitely be like you look at see this where those pylons are like they're quite it looks like quite a big structure. I think that these types of pillars with these holes would definitely be part of a house. And then maybe when you see the pillars with uh, you know three or four cut pieces cut out of it, maybe that's the fence. But that's more of a fence than. So we're at the village, and what we think we found is some posts leaning, some posts going for a fence line that comes into the village from the track. So the track from the hamlet comes up over the little creek and then leads in through here. And this is like a bit of a grand entrance. It's had a, had a tree and a few trees growing on the other side of it since it's been built, but it's definitely a little grand entrance to enter the village. And then this is the uh, floor of the church. That's how we're going to it at one stage. Wow. <laughs> they usually are the best uh, structures built in a town, aren't they? Look at these mango trees in the background. Just here. Oh, look. There's another well. Plunge pool. Oh wow, look at that. And yeah, that would have been maybe that was a that would have been some type of um, water storage thing going on there as well. From the well you'd store it in there, wouldn't you? I'll tell you what though, you're right. A uh, just like a 25 psi um, little compressor, and you got yourself a little jacuzzi, haven't you? It's how we roll. Cool. <laughs> so it's part of the church garden, or? I don't know. It's all that stone's been laid there. Like That's uh, looks like it's even brick. It looks like it's so flat. Well, it is brick. It's so flat. flat. So beautiful. It's just a little garden of mango trees. We're in the middle of the day, what is it, one o'clock in the afternoon? We're in March, so. But it is just beautiful. You could almost imagine what it was like, hey, when it was all nice and clean and built up and, and it is a Sunday, so first time we've been at church on a Sunday for a little while. Another well, so they've 
they've got a little line of wells haven't they they've obviously picked where the water's coming through and one of the reasons why they left it seemed that it said was because of lack of water so they do have a great well at Napernum and they've got all those wetlands in the wet season but well <laughs> it's been a massive day very hot can't wait to get back to the boat we've walked throughout this whole area but it's been such a privilege to be able to do that it's such a big part of indigenous Cape York history as well as white European history but isn't it a privilege to be able to see it it yeah. took us a long time to find it it's really really remote it's in the middle of nowhere um, but unreal yeah yeah absolutely I think we should go fishing and get some lunch we've already got lunch oh, let's get you some more lunch we've already got two fish for lunch just go fishing then never needed an excuse to go fishing before <laughs> Another thing you had, it had a store. And at the store, you could go and work and exchange for flour and stuff like that, but you could also get fishing hooks. Oh, that's important. Very important. Look, by 1900... So they had their own VCF? Pretty much, yeah. They only had one product, though. It was fishing hooks, because you couldn't buy a nylon fishing line. That wasn't invented until mid-30s. So, but fishing hooks were in full swing. Like, even mustard um, was making mass-producing fishing hooks. So you get really good quality fishing hooks. They were actually plaiting fishing line, is plaiting the right word? Plaiting mm -hmm. fishing line out of bark and cottonwood trees as well make really good fishing line too. So we just had to check out the fishing, didn't we? Just for historical purposes, of course. Of course. And yeah. plus we're hungry, we need lunch. Starving. Yeah. Anyway, check this out, a bit of fishing. <laughs> That's lunch. Mm -hmm. Only got to be 35 to be legal, so. We're not really far from 20 mile mission or the old Weeper mission. And we want, really wanted to see what the fishing's like. We fished at this rock bar the first time we came down and we got some fish, didn't we? But uh, that's a really nice mangrove jack off the rock bar. And uh, we've got a finger mark in there for lunch as well. So we might have a jack and finger mark for lunch. But that's the one thing that the, the old missionaries and the residents of the mission, they had really good fishing up here. Um, but it was really seasonal, so sometimes when the rains come and all that fresh water is just ripping out through this river, because they're so far upstream, they would have struggled, but other times they had access to some really good fish, so he's a great jack. Well, you catch fish and uh, obviously don't hold them well enough, and they end up in your leg. Pulling the spike out of my leg. It saw it up straight away, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the more you're playing with it, the sore it's getting. Okay, well, I'll stop playing with it. <laughs> what have we got here? Oh, it's a big jack. Yeah, come on. Oh, look at that. That's the second big jack we got up the Emily. Uh, what a great fish. Just fishing the rock bars on the way out. <laughs> Very happy with that. I love my mangrove jack, they're great. Such an aggressive fish. And grab Jack, finger mark, and show us the pistol. 
That's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> That's it. Mangrove jack finger mark. And olive oil and pesto. That's it. Tomato pesto. That's it. Mm. Well, that's good.